Let's have a look then yeah. the team of the year. I don't know if you two are comparing notes because there's quite a lot of agreed selections. Eight, eight of, uh, so the back four, Trent, Saliba, Van Dijk and uh, Destiny Doggy. He's been, a, he's been um, well, quite a performer, Jamie. A doggy, yeah, listen, he, I think he's been fantastic. I think the fullbacks, Porro, I nearly put him in. He, he was close to coming in as well. I think he's been fantastic. And they've just been a huge influence on the Tottenham team. And yeah, they've, they've won a lot of games, but they've lost a lot of games at times uh, this season. But they've been a brilliant watch. And I think it's just been fascinating watching what Posta Coglu's actually done with his fullback. So, and also, I think of the left backs of a lot of the other teams, if you like, I don't think anyone's really stood out. So for me, he's, he has been the big standout. So clearly, Gary, you're happy with your Declan Rice pick as well. Yeah, I think Declan Rice has had a good solid start at Arsenal. I think maybe soured slightly in the last few weeks by the results, but generally he's been a, a very good sign. He's settled in well and, um, you know, he'll be there and he's a big player for many, many years to come. And yeah, I, I actually looked at um, midfield was a difficult area. Left back was a challenge and Doggies think the outstanding choice. I went with the same one as Cara, but I think midfield was the area where I felt most like I was struggling really in the sense that, you know, I looked at a few and there's no one really been amazing in midfield. Rice probably been the pick of the bunch. We'll come to the, uh, the, uh, the big reveal shortly, but you both agreed on three forward players. Um, there's a reason why I'm sort of hedging my bets because someone's picked an extra forward player. But Salah, Bowen and Son uh, are in both of your teams. So, so uh, Gary, let's come back to you on Jared Bowen. Yeah, Bowen had to be in my team, just what our West Ham have done, how he's done, the goals he's scored, um, the impact he's had. And I always think when you're doing that for a team that isn't at the very top and isn't creating the most chances, I always think it's more challenging. So he's been outstanding. The thing that I felt uncomfortable with was having him as my sole centre forward. I felt as though in the end, because of my lack of what would be real options in midfield, I went for the extra striker up top with Bowen because I felt as though it was a better option than going for a weaker <laughs> player in midfield. He's really thinking about this. Yeah, he's, he's he? really justifying playing a front four. But, Let, I mean, for, can I look. just mention Bowen? Here's, here's Gary's oh. team, then. Here's Gary's team. So wow, four it, strikers. It's not. <laughs> it's going to be fun it's, to it's, watch. It's, it, it's not a front four, really. It, Bowen well, what is it, then? Sort of just, Bowen, well, Salah plays, as you, know, as you know, he sort of moves in from that side. He comes in off the line, as does Son. You know, it was more of a front three, and then Bowen was just sort of playing sort of a little bit in behind Haaland, not directly up with him. Oh, so so you've, um, got, you've got Bowen as a ten? Well, not a 10, just more of a sort of loose forward around Haaland. A little bit like Alvarez does, Jamie. He's watched Manchester City. Well, um, why don't you put him and, in then? Well, no, I'm just saying, I just thought Bowen was a, yeah, a little bit like Alvarez does for City. I thought, for me, I was happy with midfield. I, I thought about Douglas Luiz at, at Villa, and I looked at the stats between Luiz, Rice and Rodri and felt as though there was a case for putting him in. But I thought with Rice and Rodri holding midfield with Saliba and Van Dijk behind, we could afford to be a little bit more attacking up top. And I thought the other midfield players, there were the likes of Bernardo Silva and, you know, a couple of others. There's ones at Chelsea. I, thought, I couldn't pick anyone from Chelsea or Manchester United just because of how, how bad they've been. Mm. So I just thought, I can't pick any players from that team, from those teams. Jamie has. And I thought, yeah, yeah I, well, I, well, I well done well. to him. Yeah, well, I mean, the, I mean, the big problem I've got with Gary's team is it's going to be the most narrowest team I've ever seen in my life because he's going to have the full-back, so Doggy and Trent are going to come inside. The two wide players come inside, absolutely no width whatsoever. He's got Salah as wing-back. Yeah. Should we get to my team? <laughs> I, I, think my team would, I, I think my team would beat your team, Jay. <laughs> well, Cole Palmer, Palmer Bernard, a Chelsea with player has made steam, it in. With steamroller that lot. Well, for me, Bernardo Silva, I can't believe you've, you've not picked Bernardo Silva. I just think he's, he's sensational. He is every season. He had to be in there. And Cole Palmer, I, I think you say you can't pick a certain player because the team hasn't done so well. But that, for me, almost elevates Cole Palmer. His performances this season, I mean, he's been Chelsea's best player by a mile, which is not too difficult. But... That is looking like, I wouldn't say a mistake for Man City because, you know, Woody have got in ahead of forward and different players. But I think Palmer has been one of the players of the season. Not just, he's not just lucky to get in the, the team as such. He's been one of the best players in the Premier League this season. So would you rather have Vicario than Alisson? I just think because he's new to the Premier League, I think Alisson's the best goalkeeper in the world. But in terms of being new to the Premier League, I think he, he's prevent, you know, the XG prevention is, is, is the most in the league as well. I think he's been brilliant with that high line, coming off his line and helping Spurs uh, with that as well. So for a new keeper to come into the Premier League and perform as well as he's done, that's why he's in. I have to be honest, Gary, I think Jamie was uh, wavering over Mo Salah as well. 
Was he? <laughs> um, yeah. And what's winning I, this look, that I mean, penalty? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I mean, I would not mention Rodri and Rodri. You talk about Bernardo Silva not being in my team. Rodri's won the World Club Championship. He wins the Super Cup. They, they can't win a game without him. He's the most important midfield player in the league by a mile, Rodri. He's the best midfield player in that position in the so world. So why have you not picked him? He Rodri, has. he's in my team. You picked Rodri? Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah, he's, he's holding me pl alongside Declan. What's going on here? How can he play Declan? Parallel like universe. Him, it's the same player. <laughs> Oh, my God. Can we just go back to the point? You always try and take me off track. Rodri is the best midfield player in the world in his position. They've won two trophies already. They're probably, I don't know, two points, three points off the top of the league or four points off the top of the league, whatever they are. I can't believe you wouldn't pick Rodri in that midfield. So I had to have Rodri and Rice in. You'd pick Rodri. I mean, I love Bernardo Silva and I think Cole Palmer's a great talent, but I couldn't pick anyone from Chelsea United. They've been that bad. I just wrote them off. And then Bernardo Silva, I just couldn't get him in ahead of the front four players. Haaland, for me, is the best striker in the world along with Harry Kane. And to be I fair, he's, I think he's, he's well, a top the scorer, the Haaland, isn't he? Yeah. yeah he's Haaland's the top, top scorer scorer in the league. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason I let... Yeah, to okay. be honest, I, I think most teams play 4-3-3, so I'm only going to ever pick one striker. No, I mean, we've just been talking about football from 20 years ago. That's what people used to do, play 4-4-2 or 4-2-4. The football that team's playing out is 4-3-3, so one striker has to go in. Now, Haaland's been injured of late. Yes, he's the top scorer, but he plays for Man City. Yes, he's the best striker by a mile. But I felt that Bowen deserved to go in for the fact that he scored in 11 games this season. Now, he's only played 18 and seven goals away from home. So when you're talking about strikers, sometimes a striker can score, because I was looking at Solanke and Watkins, but I think both of them got a hat-trick in a game and didn't score in as many games as Bowen. And to score seven games away from home, I think is pretty special as a striker. Any more, Gary? We'll revisit at the end of the season, if not. No, I mean, ultimately, both teams are good teams. Um, I obviously, maybe we should have been given the same system so that we could obviously then decide which players to have in. But I, I think that I still would have gone for Rice and Rodri in midfield. I, I don't think I'd have come away from that. Uh, Luis was the other one that I was considering. And, you know, Bernardo, I absolutely love Bernardo Silva. Just, Can I, I just ask you about something, end. Gary? You mentioned about Louise. <laughs> I know for a fact he was in your team at six o'clock tonight. <laughs> See, I knew this type of thing would be happening. <laughs> When, when, when the cat's away, the mice run around, you see. <laughs> who's, your, who's your manager of the year? Or the manager uh, so far definitely, this season? Definitely, definitely Unai Emery so far. Definitely Unai Emery so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I was thinking about, sort of, I thought Gary O'Neill as well, I, I think has been sensational. I just think when I look where Wolves are on the table, they've probably been there before under Nuno. I think where Aston Villa are now, it feels like a really long time since they've been in that position. So I'd go for Unai Emery, manager of the year. Gary, thank you. 2024 starts as 2023 ended with these two bickering <laughs> about their team selections. Gary, thank you. Thanks for your really help thank tonight. You.